Hi everybody, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. Today's tutorial is shoot the light, shoot the color, one step beyond pointing your shadow at the bird. So in bird photography, we always talk about pointing our shadow at the bird so that the bird is nicely lit up by the sun at our back or behind us. And that angle of sunlight really works well for bird photography. There's also something that we'll talk about today and that's the 180 degree rule. I find that the 180 rule works around sunset and maybe the blue hour when you can point in the opposite direction where you think you want to be and uh, you'll get some good results but we'll talk about that in a minute first let's talk about this sandhill crane at bosque del apache it's nice morning light i prefer morning light because it's cleaner it's crisper and it will make your images appear sharper and also it's got that nice warm buttery look to it and in this particular case the nice bright bird you know separates itself well from the background well shoot the color shoot the light we say color because we want to look at where the reflection is in the water or where the clouds are are lit up nicely by the sunset and here we're shooting silhouettes we're shooting into the sunlight or pointed to the west this sandhill crane is almost hundred percent silhouetted you can see that it's got some white around its neck and it's on its face but I didn't want to darken the image so much that the orange that nice pale orange in the background got too dark because this is really the color that I remember it being that day the sandhill cranes will parachute down into these ponds in the evening and if the wind is right and it's at our backs then they'll actually come down and glide towards us at Bosque del Apache and so that makes a really nice silhouette. When the birds do this we want to anticipate them going into the color of the sky. So these birds up here I wouldn't take this picture they've got some nice positions they've got some nice forms to them but I wouldn't take that picture it doesn't have that color. So I would wait until that group of birds got down here into the color and then I would take the picture. This picture and the next one were taken with a 100 to 400 millimeter lens. I normally use a 600 millimeter lens and a 1.4 extender so I can really uh, isolate the birds against the, the nice color in the sky. So here again in this picture we've got some cranes over here that are nicely lit up. You nice light in the background. These up here I don't think I would take that picture just because they're the sky is not as bright, it's not as colorful, it's not as intense. Well, we want to visualize where we want the birds to be when we're going to take our picture. This particular day, it was kind of cloudy. There wasn't a lot of color in the sky, but there was just above the mountains, there was this one band of light. So I was waiting for the cranes to get to that area. So these cranes are, have been uh, floating down through the sky. When they got into this band right in here, that's when I took my picture. So I focused on them, I waited for them to drop into there, and then I took the pictures. Then in post-processing, I kind of saturated this a little bit more, give the sky a little bit of punch and some color. It kind of made the clouds blue, but you know, that's okay because it's more of a silhouette, artistic kind of image. It worked because that's where the light was. Now, we don't want the birds to collide into each other. We don't want them to be like these two are front and back. They're just really close together. There's not one that's straight in front or one straight behind the other one. And so when the birds collide like this and they're in a silhouette, it's just not gonna work at all. Sometimes birds that are kind of colliding like this will work if there's some depth of field and you can see the difference between the two birds. But in this particular case, you really can't. So we wanna avoid the midair collisions. The main way that I do this is I use intermittent focus and I will focus on a bird when it's farther away. I'll sort of visualize where I want to take the picture and I'll, but I'll concentrate on one bird at a time. So I focus on the bird, I lit up on the focus, I keep the bird in the viewfinder and then when the bird gets close enough I start taking the picture. And in this case we've had the last two frames where the birds were in kind of bluish sky. You can see now that there, there's this orange trees behind here and so here's the image I wanted. I wanted the sandhill crane with that orange kind of fall color background and so I waited until the bird dropped into that and it had that color in the background. When we're shooting these silhouettes it's a great idea to underexpose one or two stops and then make it a pure silhouette so the birds are very black. That will intensify and saturate the color in the background and it makes your sunset or your sunrise look really stunning. This happens to be a sunrise. And this is another sunrise with a family of cranes, sunrise reflected in, in the main pond at, at Bosque del Apache. I also like to use the zone. If you're a Canon shooter, I use these last three here. I use the zone autofocus selection modes because sometimes the 
bird that's a light gray bird on a gray sky at, at towards sunset there's not a lot of contrast there so i find that the more focal points that i have active the sharper the images and then the bird's going to drop into some light it's going to be more contrast and so then it'll focus on those right away so i find that these zones work really well I, in nikon that would be a group focus mode and i think that will help you get this kind of picture I also make sure that my camera is on auto white balance because if I selected cloudy as an example I would oversaturate or change the color so that it almost looked like it was HDR or a little bit gaudy and I don't like that so make sure that you have auto white balance. Now here's the 180 rule because now instead of facing to the west where the sun's setting I'm facing to the east at sunset and there's these nice pink clouds in the sky the sandhill cranes flying by now it's not a lot of light I'm pushing the ISO here as high as I can and the image is a little bit grainy but I've got that blur in the wing and the birds calling and so it makes a nice kind of artsy image but I'm shooting 180 degrees from from where the I normally would and then here's an image where there's a group of sandhill cranes I've got those nice pink clouds off looking off to the east at sunset and then I've got the slow shutter speed making those blurry wings which makes a nice artsy image Hey, if you're interested in learning about birds in flight or some of the workshops that I do, visit me on my website, timboyerphotography.com. A couple of bonus tips. If you're in the develop module and Lightroom, you can scroll over to the right side panel where all the develop tools are, scroll all the way down to the bottom, pick camera calibration, and there'll be a little thing in there that says Adobe standard or something like that. And that's like the default preset from your camera. You can change that to camera faithful or camera landscape and then you can use that preset to really enrich the colors of your evening silhouette shots like this. Second, second bonus tip today is two apps that I've been using lately. One is called Magic Hour and the other one is called Golden Hour and they literally tell you when to be out shooting so that you can plan your day and get those great shots. If you enjoy what I'm doing on my channel, give me a like or a subscribe. Maybe share this with your friends. I do a tutorial every Wednesday, so until then, good shooting, and I will see you later. Bye.